Voting is when you know what you want, you find out who's offering it, you let them know, sir, I want you to know that I, I remember you making this promise. If they're serving for the right reasons, they should be able to do what needs to be done for their community. What is it that you're going to do? Why, why should I vote for you? And on your worst day, are you still doing what you said you would do? People forget that elected officials work for the public. Our voice is different because we're the people that put them in office. We voted you in, you rascal. And the truth of the matter is, you got four years to give us something that looks like what we are seeking or what we're asking for, or we will remove you. And then when they're elected and they don't do it, he says, sir, I need you to know that me and my church will never vote for you again. Mind dear friends, your vote is precious, almost sacred. It is the most powerful non-violent tool we have to create a more perfect union. If you really understood the power of your voice, you would take elections seriously. Not just the presidential election, but all elections. I know a lot of people believe that it's just a joke. This whole politics thing, it's a joke. This whole election is just a form of entertainment. Like, there's no way I'm going to trust these people. Who are these people? And do they care about me? Are they just all in it for themselves? I think there has to be a lot more connecting with the people. Like, a lot more connection. Especially the younger people. Um, because I'll tell you now, a lot of us really are oblivious to the fact of, I was, because a long, long time ago, I really did not think about politics at all. I, I, I didn't really care. I just received a re revelation of how important local government is maybe a few years ago. Um, I was only president, you know, like, it's just like, all right, the president, Obama's running for president or such and such is running for president, and that's always been um, considered like the most uh, important office or or that's always been on the forefront of my mind because of the exposure I had. I, I didn't hear anybody talking about local politics growing up, to be honest. There was a time that I only participated in presidential elections because it was the thing that was drilled into me as a registered voter that this is the thing that matters. I didn't know any local elected officials. I didn't know how that impacted my life. I didn't understand how it impacted my life. So I'm sure if you look at my voter history along the way, I didn't vote in every single local election. And I, and I am very transparent in saying that because I did not fully understand what it meant. Big elections are on TV. Big elections are on your radio. They, there's a whole bunch of advertisement. Every election is big. It impacts your life. But they, those are the ones when people start paying more attention. There's a presidential election coming up, so everyone's clued in to know, oh, you're running too, oh, you're running too. But no, these are all individual elections. These are all individual people who are gonna impact your everyday life. Um, but there are special elections that happen. There are people who pass. There are people who have to move to another another state. So therefore now their seat is vacated. Um, that happened in Columbia last year. There was an election on New Year's Eve. How many people actually knew that and went to the went to the polls on New Year's Eve or before to make sure that their voice was heard? As I looked into running for office, and what that entailed, I still didn't fully understand. And there are lots of people who want to see change in their community and they don't fully understand what that um, electoral and what that democratic process actually looks like. And so I had to do some research. I had to understand what conservative versus liberal meant. I had to understand what right wing versus left wing meant. I had to understand um, just the process. Like a lot of people think that I am the coroner already. They don't understand that I won the Democratic primary and I, my name is still on the ballot. And so they're confused, like, why is her name still on the ballot? Didn't we vote for her already? I think we are losing faith in the Democratic process. And I think part of it is because we don't understand the full Democratic process and 
the danger in not understanding the very process that is affecting your life, that if you don't engage it, then it will literally direct you in a path that may not be in your best interest. Uh, people talk about this political process it is not working. Yes, it is. It's working the way it was designed to work from the beginning. <laughs> it's working, bruh. It's just that we got to make it work differently. We got to make it work for all people versus the top 1% or 10%. I don't like how we've done the voting movement. Um, just go vote. That is a lie. It's a lie. It is. It really is. Okay, that's go vote is the equivalent of you telling a woman who's lonely, just go to the club and get you a man. <laughs> I mean, that's a lie. No, you have to you have to research, you have to get to know, you have to, you have to, you know, this is hiring. You're hiring a person. These people are are in these are are in these positions. Getting those salaries, being the person that you have to have to interact with their office for six years, four years, two years. Ain't nobody elected for 30 days. You're gonna have to deal with these people. You still need to know who you're voting for. You need to know what their beliefs are. You need to know what they're gonna do and then hold them accountable. The folks that cast their ballots don't hold those people accountable, then you know. They, that's how you disenfranchise yourself with your vote after you voted. See, there's a difference between a moment and a movement. Movement, continuous movement is what causes progress. Moments are moments. And what happened is we had a moment in, 20, uh, in 2008. CBS now estimates because of victories in California, Washington, Oregon, and Hawaii, CBS projects that Senator Barack Obama of Illinois will be the next president of the United States. He defeats John McCain, the senator from Arizona and Vietnam War hero. And no matter whom you voted for, you'd have to agree this is an incredible milestone in the history of this country. A century and a half after the Constitution abolished slavery and guaranteed blacks the right to vote, four decades after the passage of the Civil Rights Act, voters have chosen our first African-American president. We had a moment in 2016. We had a whole other moment in 2016. It is my high honor and distinct privilege to introduce to you the president-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Now we're about to have a moment in 2020, but in between those moments are movements. And the movements that, that, that actually exist are going to, are what, or what is there when the, when, the, when the moment goes away. I think oftentimes we don't do um, a lot of research on who we're voting for. When the moment goes away, people look around and they don't remember who they voted for. They don't remember who promised them what because they were stuck, because they were so stuck in the moment. But the movement will continue. And if you just came here for the moment, you go home, the movement will just go on without you and your interest would not be a part of the movement. Our forefathers fought, people died for, the, for us to have the right to vote. But yet, oftentimes we don't take advantage of it. We may do it every four years, but I, I think it's really, really Im imperative that we let people know every time there's an election, our voice needs to be heard. If we're not gonna realize our power, there's no use to having it. So we might as well be in a dictatorship, to be honest. If we're not gonna use it. Okay, so for the people who don't vote and don't participate, I don't wanna tell them anything. I wanna shut up and listen. I want to ask you, why don't you vote? Why do you feel like your vote is insignificant? Because I think we shame a lot of people that don't vote and don't participate versus listening to find out what it is that bothers them about the process. Now, of course, my beliefs are you should vote in every single election. Your vote does count. Um, I lost my election by hundreds of votes, and we all know hundreds of people. Um, in fact, I had somebody tell me was after my election, man, did you win? I was like, no, I lost in my runoff. And the person was like, man, I didn't show up. I thought you had it in the bag. I just knew you would win. So it's people like that who sit out on elections um, that take things for granted and every vote counts. And so I wouldn't want to tell that person anything. I would want to listen. 
We're looking at an electorate now with a whole lot of new voters, not just because people are 18 years old, but because people have not participated in the process. Shaquille O'Neal came out the other day and said that this was the first election he's voting in as a grown man, superstar Shaquille O'Neal. And so if he is like that, there's got to be more people like that. And the more we shame folk into why they don't vote and, and you know, every vote counts, which is true, we got to shut up and listen. Okay, so what was it about what I ran on that did not motivate you to turn out the vote? Above all, I think that they just want to be heard. And with all of the rioting and the looting and the protests and everything and marching, I think that that's a result of us wanting our voice to be heard. You gotta make some noise. Um, John Lewis said you gotta start some good trouble. You gotta get into some good trouble sometimes. And that's okay. But taking the march a step further to having a list of demands. I was out there marching and I would probably go out there again just to you know be out there for my presence and my support. However, I can't say that made a lot of sense, you know, because we marched to a closed state house. Everybody who work at the state house, probably, I'm guessing on Sunday, uh, probably was on a boat or with their family. And we marched there and we had a you know a conversation with ourselves and then we left. You know, there was necessarily no I, I didn't see any action afterwards. Now maybe I missed it. Maybe there's some action that's going you know, something that's taking place. However, it looked good for Facebook, Instagram, it looked great. The pictures, the photo ops, it looked great. The politicians who showed up, I can't blame them. I, I, you know, if I was running for office, I would have been there too. You know, um, but was it effective? I think it is pointless to waste my time marching and there are no demands. When we want something looked into, one of the best ways to do that is to is to raise awareness. A march is just raising awareness. It is not to say that we're here to loot or to be violent or to cause to cause bad trouble. It is to say that we have something that we've been trying to say for years and no one is listening. So let me get your attention in another way. So I ask you, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? The time has arrived to tear down the barrier to the ballot box. Today, we are able to do our part in this long fight for the very soul of our nation. People have to identify and understand what voter suppression looks like. Because voter suppression could be an illusion. It could be something that is said over and over again to embed in the back of your mind that this process is not going to work. So why should I waste my time if this process is not going to work? Because they continue to tell me that it's a problem with the process. And those people that are spewing this type of rhetoric into our um, society the people that support them are going to vote. They're not paying it any attention at all because they understand that this system has been created. And as long as we follow and continue to do what we do that fits the system, we're going to be fine. The fear of our nation now, the fear of some in our nation now is the people will speak. And so you got to do everything to pervert that process. These things are going to happen. You're going to have things on social media that's not accurate. You're going to have emails that are going to be coming that's not accurate. But unfortunately, that's just politics. But we, we want to make sure that, you know, you're talking with someone that you know can give you the right answer. Um, yeah, they're, they're trying to suppress, um, they're saying, with, with the mail-in votes, all of that. It, it's it's one, wanting to get people to a level where they're uncomfortable in voting. Um, an excuse not to do it. That's why I say remain focused. Remain focused. The, the, we have people in place that's making sure that the votes are going to be counted, the votes are going to be accurate. And so all we have to do is our part, which is to vote and let everyone else know to get out there to vote. They understand the full power of vote. They know how elections matter. They know how elections can affect your everyday life. So they'll push their agenda and they'll suppress anything that comes against it. A voter suppression is a byproduct of elections, just like the Supreme Court. Um, 
You beat voter suppression by winning elections. You win elections by overcoming voter suppression. Chicken and the egg. Um, the very first election, uh, there was a record number of African Americans elected to office in this country. The very first election after we uh, given right. Do you think there wasn't voter suppression going on? You know, um, that's you know. So I, I don't. I, you know, voter voter suppression means that they make it hard. They can't make it impossible. You know what I'm saying? We we have too many avenues as a community to to, to make it make it impossible. If a person wants to have an excuse, anybody can find one. But to be honest, we have enough resources in our community, ready ready and able resources in our community that everyone can go vote. The most important thing that constituents can do is realize how important their one vote is. Really understand that your vote does matter. Your voice is important. That's why so much is being spent to either get you to the polls and vote or to deter you away from voting. Understand that the political process works. So make sure that you go out and vote and not just that stay involved there are so many other things that you can do to uh, be involved with the political process even after the election is over there's so many ways that you can use your gifts and talents to be that change that you want to see i'll shout from my advocacy place you shout from your journalism place. Somebody else shouts from their political place. Somebody else shouts from their economic place. Somebody shout, you know, from the healthcare perspective. But if we all shout at this wall together, we all unify and, and come together quietly under stealth. Don't let them know what we're doing. And when it's time to shout, they, whoa, all the walls will come down. That's a humanity, that's a nation, that's a vision that I believe in. So whatever it is, if you're worried about it, if you're concerned about it, if you're happy about it, find a way, find someone that you see on social media that you can re just reach out to them. If someone reached out to me tomorrow and said, I want to do this, I'm going to give you an outlet. I'm going to tell you where to go to get more involved. But if anything, if you're upset, find someone who has that same passion for your anger and you get with them to figure out what you can do to change the scope of what things look like. But I would really just encourage our generation, we've got to stop complaining and we've got to use that to give us the energy to make a difference and to make a change. So if people do that, it'd be change made all over this world. And so I think when people find out what their niche is, what their uh, expertise is, what they're called to do, Man, ride that thing and collaborate with people who are doing their thing so you can help make the better goal. Um, I, I recite this poem all the time because we learned it at South Carolina State called We the Willing. So we the willing who are led by the unknown are doing the impossible for the ungrateful. We've done so much with so little, we're now qualified to do anything with nothing. And so that poem is literally the answer to what role do I play? Because the answer is be the willing. As long as you're willing to do something, you're pushing the movement forward.